What are some things happening in the NBA that you wish more people were talking about? That's what I asked on Twitter last night because we had zero games and I was just trying to figure out what the heck do I want to talk about? What do I want to do? So as a guy that watches as much basketball as I do, obviously there's a lot of storylines and things happening around the league that I either don't get a chance to talk about or I completely, completely miss. And this is an opportunity for us to get flowers from for some under talked about players slash team. But before that, I want to let you know that I just put out a podcast. We had Nas Reed on it. Very busy dude. As you can see, he's, he's in a car right now <laughs> during our interview. He's a busy dude. Very cool dude. I'm just saying the link is in the description if you want to support or watch the episode with Nas Reed. And like I said, I will continue to promote the Candy Beats podcast every chance I get. We're starting to get more and more NBA players. It's a beautiful thing. I got some more in, in the back pocket just coming out soon. Also coming out soon are these hats and an entire Shooting Stars collection for the Enjoy Basketball brand that is coming out on Thursday. I'll give you more details about that to, in, in tomorrow's episode. Let's get into some of these things that we should be talking about. The first one some optimistic KT saying Derek Lively being the second best player in the draft and starting at center for a playoff team when he's the second youngest lottery pick. Ranking these young dudes is kind of irrelevant to me, but we can definitely, definitely give our flowers to Derek Lively because from the very first moment he walked on the NBA court as far as an official game in that game against Wimby, a lot of us opened our eyes like, oh boy, is this the guy? Because again, I don't watch college basketball, but I remember when the draft was happening, we were doing a live stream and my guys that do watch college basketball was like, yo, that is the perfect center for Luka Doncic. He's relatively raw, but once he starts to put it together as a rim roller, as a defender, with Luka Doncic, that can be kind of scary. And we're just 19 games to his NBA career and we're starting to see that. Like he started off, of course, that first game against Wimby where he looked like the better rookie, but his minutes have changed a little bit, whether it be foul trouble or J uh, Jason Kidd finding out different rotations and stuff. That last game against OKC was his best game his NBA career and ultimately they ended up losing that game but from the very first moment to the to the very end he was what the second best player on the Dallas Mavericks you can argue that he was what the second best player on the course specific again specifically that game and we're talking about Shea on the court we're talking about you know Jay Dub, Jay Holmgren like he might be a player that gets up for these type of things. Because now that I'm thinking about it, had the good game against Wimby, had the great game against Chet. He's just looking at these other bigs in his class. Because, again, Chet was last year. But anyway, in his rookie class, like, hold on, I can, I can hold my own. This draft class in general just has a bunch of really tough defenders or guys that project to be really good defenders from up top of Victor Wembanyama. Again, I'm adding Chet in this one. The Thompson twins, even though Amin Thompson hasn't played a ton. Anthony Black, Bilal Kula, Bali. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Jaime Hawkins, we can go on and on and on on, like, the defensive potential of this draft class as a whole and Derek Lively sits towards the top of that list because we talked about him being a raw talent if if he could put it together I, he, he don't he don't look as raw as a lot of people anticipated in my opinion like yeah he's not going to be a dude that's going to put the ball on the floor uh has he and, and and go up for a strong lay but rolling to the rim good hands good defensive instincts where there are a lot of times where they were running pick and roll with the OKC Thunder. And let's say it was Josh Giddy as the roll man. He was able to, to just play some drop coverage and recover enough to block a bunch of shots in this game. And we just looking, I'm just talking about the shots that he were blocked, but the ones that he changed just by him being at the rim and so on and so forth. He's been amazing. And when you have a guy like Luka Doncic that can put the, the lob on the money for you every single time, I can only see him getting better and better and better. The next one is Brandon. Brandon Swoles, my, my fault, Brandon. I, I know that's probably not how you pr pronounce it. Jalen Suggs figuring it out on Twitter. I have this little series called Jalen Suggs Moments. I know this it's a bad titled series, but it is what it is. Where I'm watching OKC, I'm sorry, I'm watching Orlando Magic Games, and I'm finding a moment for Jalen Suggs, right? Because he is such a high energy, very emotional basketball player, there are so many moments throughout his games where like you can count it as a Jalen Suggs moment. So I got to pick and choose which out of the seven moments is worth tweeting about. Jalen Suggs has become one of my favorite role players in all the association. Some of y'all have been around here for a long time. You know of a thing called the Kenny, uh, the Kenny for Real All Stars. I'm putting together my ballot this early in the season. Jalen Sucks is one of the one of the captains. He's he, you can argue that out of all of the perimeter defenders in basketball so far this season, Jalen Sucks has been the best. Or you can't get further than number five without mentioning the name Jalen Sucks. And also, he's now shooting with 37% on four three point attempts per game. Like the three point shot is coming around, and you add the defensive intensity and stuff. Like when you look at that draft class 
guys, you look at the top guys, you feel like Jalen Suggs did not live up to expectation. I can understand that obviously he's a what fourth, fifth overall pick in the entire draft. But when you take it at face value at the player that he is right now at 22 years old, you can feel pretty good about that draft pick if you're if you're the Orlando Magic, especially since they're one of the better teams in the association through the first month. Jaden McDaniel's GOAT says small market teams dominate. Now the idea of a small market team is up up for debate. Um, cause like, okay, so here is a good art article that tells you like, these are the large markets. These are the media markets, right? So like the teams that are playing really good basketball right now, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Denver Nuggets, Orlando Magic, technically all not, are not small market teams. These guys are the smaller markets, but we kind of group all of these together. If you're not the LA Lakers or the Chicago Bulls or in New York or Philly or Dallas, you kind of look, looked at as a small market team, but a lot of these teams have put it together. And there was a tweet the other day. Um, by Brett Usher. Let me see if I can find it. And it was about Anthony Edwards. They said Anthony Edwards needed a bigger market, but the dude is 22 and has already been to the playoffs twice. And he was in a hit movie and has a signature shoe. Is the best player or tied for the best player in the league record-wise. And then on this, Cal Kuzma said big markets don't matter anymore, which I think is becoming a reality. Like we, I felt like when I was younger, and I'm only talking about let's say five to ten years ago. You when you need when you wanted to do these type of things, you wanted to be in movies, you wanted to have a, a popping signature shoe, you needed to be in one of the, the top markets. Now between him, Giannis, John Morant, Lamelo, you don't necessarily need to end up in one of the bigger markets to have a successful off-court career. It was like, man, if you want to be popping, you better get to LA, you better get to New York, and that's not the case anymore, y'all. And now that I feel like NBA front offices and so on and so forth are, I, I say it's smarter now than they've ever been, where you're able to build in these smaller to media-sized markets without having to um, go out and get one of the superstar free agents, draft the whale, making the trades, and, and then bringing people in that will love the city. So it is cool to see. It's, it's cool to see that it is balancing itself out where it's not just I'm in California or, or I'm in New York for me to be successful as a player or win championships or, or be a marketable player. I like this when the emergence of Kobe White and the consistency of Patrick Williams now that Levine is sidelined. Uh, Tony Hawk, skater boy, said it's been two, two games, brother. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and you're right but you're also wrong because i want to root for these dudes okay also is that a is that a free in that is this free in um one of one of the best shows of the season I, I, i'm gonna say that my number one show of the season no it is kind of cool i talked about it briefly on the on the candy beach podcast um but kobe white has become in uh, has turned into a different player which is cool i'm not even just looking at this two game sample size for kobe it's gone back for a couple different games or so um bulls fans are just kind of happy to have a new life in the team over the last couple games and hell you can argue that they were scheduled loss with the pelicans or you can argue about the milwaukee bucks struggles defensively i don't i don't really care to see my two of my younger players my uh my north carolina players go out and play good hoops over the last couple games that's i don't think it's something that most people care about or should be talking about but i'm just saying keep keep your eye on kobe white specifically if you have not been watching chicago's bulls ball because he's been looking better and better every single game that's all that's all i'm saying ben says the consistency on d Defense Alperin Shingun has played with with this season. There has been a lot of talk about his offense, but his defense has been slept on. I just butchered the heck out of that tweet, but you understand what, what I'm saying or what he is saying. And I I agree to 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 an extent, right? I think Alperin Shingun has been significantly better this year than his first couple years in his NBA career defensively. But because he is such a great offensive player, the defense will always be underappreciated, I would say. And I feel like unless you come into the league as a guy that it's immediately a defensive and a positive impact that the idea of you being a poor defender is going to follow you until the masses really get into your game. Like Nikola Jokic is a perfect example of this. Now, Nikola Jokic was very not, not a very good defender the first couple years of his career, but slowly he started to put it together. And now I think most people recognize that Jokic is not one of the best defensive players in the league, but he is an adequate defensive player. And if you have the, the offensive upside like Alperin should go in the offensive production like Alperin should go in the start off in year number three, and you can say that every year he's getting better defensively that you can feel good about him being your five because at the end of the day, I think that you need to have an adequate to good defensive center to hold you down in most playoff series and most times you're trying to go on a run. Now, it might be a little bit early for the Houston Rockets to think about going on a run, but you talk about them building what their future of their franchise is. To have it that Al P is not this revolving door defensively or have it so he's not one of those defensive centers that doesn't give effort or, or doesn't understand the defensive side of the ball, it just means a lot for their future. I think I personally have to tap in a little bit more 
to, to his defense to understand whether or not, you know, what Ben is saying here is completely true about it being slept on or whatever. Um, but I do recognize that he's not a bad defender anymore. But is he better than maybe I think? I don't know. I got to watch more, I guess, Houston Rocket game. Chris said this man being the MVP. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I wouldn't go that far personally. But hey, if you got him as your MVP or you got him on your MVP ballot, I can't be mad at you because the Aaron Fox has been amazing. Last year, he took that first jump. We were like, okay, Clutch is playing in the league. The Sacramento Kings are in the playoffs, yada, yada, yada. He has taken another jump on top of that. It's 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 so cool to see as a De'Aaron Fox fan to see that next jump because we knew if he got it, he put his head down and got to the rim, there was not really many people messing with him. We knew, especially based off last year, that that mid-range jump shot is silky smooth and that's his go-to spot in the half court. But now he is attempting 8.33 pointers per game, which is five more per game than last season. And he is shooting 37%. I don't know what you do about that. If you are guarding this man, how do you stop him if his three-point shot is coming along? Again, 13-game sample size. We'll see if it holds up the entirety of the season. But 37% adds another element to this man's game when he was already not unguardable, but close to unguardable. Like, the idea has been, well, you slow De'Aaron Fox down. You can not neutralize him, but you can mute him quite a bit. This season, that is not the case. He, is this, he has been a significantly better half-court player this year versus in the transition and th th that don't even make sense I, when i say that aloud it doesn't make sense but all of the numbers in the eye test says that's true you try to slow these boys down it hasn't mattered this year give him a grenade get him the ball with five seconds left in the shot clock he gonna make some magic happen he go the numbers say on grenades last couple seconds of the shot clock he is had a 1.25 points per possession, which puts him in the 93 percentile. You know how demoralizing it is to play defense for 20 seconds and still give up a bucket? De'Aaron Fox has given you that bucket. I don't know. I've just been impressed with everything that De'Aaron Fox has brought to the table. And they have a few players on their team that are not playing to expectation. And eventually, if you feel like those things are going to average out, right, like Keegan Murray can take, like starts to shoot the ball better or Harrison Barnes gets back on track, you look at this team and saw that they were the three seed last year and you feel good about them being. Because you look at before the season started, I think a lot of people recognized there was like 11 to 12 teams that are going to be competing for 10 spots. And I know a lot of people left the Sacramento Kings off like, oh, the second year after the big year is the harder year. When you think about what De'Aaron Fox is doing, you think about Sabonis' production, and you think about the, the means averaging out for the rest of the players, you feel pretty good about the Sacramento Kings keeping their spot in the playoff. There are a couple other ones like um, that I, I kept seeing, like uh, Tumani Kamara. I have not watched a ton of Portland Trailblazer games to have an opinion about him, but now that I see a lot of people talking about it, I'm going to try to lock in a little bit. Mitchell Robinson was one that got a lot of love, and I talked about him a little bit on the podcast where he, he has become one of the, maybe the second best player on the the um, New York Knicks so far this season because of his defense and everything. Overall, there are just a ton of stuff that have gone under the radar, and we might have to do a video like this every couple weeks so we can all get caught up on hoops. Leave a like, subscribe, or watch or listen to the podcast with Nas Reed, Spotify, Apple, YouTube. It's everywhere.